always is a pleasure for him to play against his ex team as he and three other teammates from Shopify were from that Cloud9 Challenger squad that won NACL in spring 2023. Fun little matchup here from some ex Cloud9 organizational members. And immediately we are into the draft and immediately into an insta lock on Zeri, which means that they will presumably give up the Corky here. Tristana banned out by Shopify. Corky's still available. Cloud9 could go uh, grab that one for JoJo really early on. It's very strong mid laner, of course. Everybody very well acquainted yep. with that one right now. And you can have such a strong lane phase if you pair it with one of Flabber's AP turbo farming junglers here. Uh, so I think that's the route they're going to go. And we have seen the evolution of priority for AP jungler shift. A lot of junglers were on the Nidalee train, but now seeing the obvious power of Zyra rise up in the jungle, she has become the premier choice for all of her junglers here in the LCS. I mean, this is kind of expected, and that's why I was thinking it's kind of risky for Shopify. They invested so much in this Zeri, the slamming the first pick Zeri, giving over a double whammy Ooh. pick of the Corky plus the Zyra here. The Lucian now has has been played a couple of times as the Lucian mid getting more and more popular, uh, really coming back into its own. And so I'm very excited to see Insanity on it because Insanity has has been one of the mid laners that has always trended towards having a very deep and wide champion pool. Uh, so he thinks that he's really gonna be able to make use of Lucian's mobility to dodge out on Corky's Qs. The nerfs to Corky, uh, especially for the mid lane, were the reductions in Gatling Gun and the, all the damage going into the Q. So uh, maybe that extra mobility will allow him to win the lane. Yep, before we roll out the second series of bands in this draft, we're going to toss it over to Tomo to see how much he really wants to beat his former org. I'm looking forward to play against C9. I was under C9 in 2023, and I like to work alongside Bladber, and I always talk to him. and. I'd say it would be very fun to actually verse him in a match. Tomio was originally with the Evil Geniuses org before a trade of Shaden for Tomio landed the jungler for Cloud9's challenger roster going into spring. And for Shopify Rebellion, this is a change of pace. We're seeing Tomio being given the Maokai, unless it gets rolled off the support, of course. But this would be more focused on playing for lane, the success of trying to build up something like this Lucian mid. Because the last time I saw Insanity play this pick was during the TSM days with Boogie, if you remember that 2v1 early dive in the mid lane. And now as we catch up on the bands here after our little video, the one to follow the Kai'Sa here, still whittling it down, is actually going to be a protection ban. So they want to protect uh, Fake God here, allow Fake God to pick another frontliner, taking away the Twisted Fate uh, to open up some easier options for him. But Renekton is still up, and Thanatos has been very happy to slam these uh, Renekton picks regardless. Now, I'm curious here, Kobe. They have not shown the AD carry pick for Berserker. The thing is, this Corky could still be flexed towards bot lane. I know Berserker put his time into the Corky games during the offseason. We got a little taste of it during their show match against Fear X or Fox during their offseason. I wonder if that's what Cloud9 is trying to hide and getting a more advantageous pick into the Lucian mid. We'll see, depending on support lock in here for Shopify, uh, for Zazel. Zazel has been a, a player that people have always talked about. He has such good sense for the game but not necessarily the best mechanics in lane. Sure. So we'll see uh, if they want to try and punish that on the bottom side, and they might. If it's going to be a lock-in with Draven, then they definitely will. Draven Nautilus would be a massive kill lane here for Cloud9. They have always had faith in mm. Berserker. Looks like they're not going to go for the kill lane, but Ezreal right now, uh, always a very good pick into it with the extra range, with the poke possibilities. Shifting it around, we'll wait and see until the 22nd mark if JoJo's gonna try to steal some of Quid's little flare with the Ezreal mid or if he will just stick with the Corky. But as you said, committing to something like an Ezreal gives him the safety in the range, which then unlocks Vulcan to look for those roams early on in the game, which is what gave Cloud9 a lot of their success against Immortals last week. And this is gonna be one of our classic matchups where uh, it's gonna be the extra poke range for Cloud9 with the Corky, Zyra, and Ezreal matched up against, can you avoid the, the engage of a Maokai Rakan? Some of the, the best engage in the entire game with the, the width of a Maokai ultimate and the speed of a Rakan engage. As long as they...
Level one awesome. has begun. Cloud nine with Vulcan trying to get into the river here, but doesn't seem like any real level one shenanigans will happen. Everyone taking that five man posture. Honestly, don't think there should be anything too crazy. Uh, and Blabber should probably head on over to his camp so you can start spawning more seeds. Zyra always does benefit a little bit extra uh, if you're able to just wait around your quadrant of the jungle that you are starting in, um, trying to get some more of those passive seed spawns just to speed up the clear, even just a tiny bit, always does help when you're trying to race down towards the bottom side of the map here. Vulcan going for a little bit of a delayed invade, trying to see if they can get any vision down, but they don't actually end up putting any wards in. Before the game gets too carried away, I want to remind people that while Shopify Rebellion having a 0-4 start to the beginning of the summer split, this was the team that did begin the Pillar of Dominoes for Cloud9 to fall during the spring split. They were one of the first teams that knocked what we believed was going to be the power ranked first team, just easily rolling through all the other teams during the spring split. And Shopify, I mean, they were the first ones to upset them. There was a moment in time where people were referring to this Shopify team as the blue shell team because they would only beat very, very strong teams and they were losing to basically everybody else. Uh, so always have to keep that in mind. And we have the immediate level two jump in from Insanity trying to take advantage early on like we talked about here with the Lucian. Goes for the trade onto JoJo. Nice piercing light through the minions there. Gets a tiny bit of extra damage. We'll have to see if there's any sort of early visit from a Maokai as well. And Insanity oh. keeps it up. Does he want to flash for the auto attack? The piercing light through the minions. Well played by Insanity. And that forces JoJo's flash. And that's what you have to do when you go for this pick here with the Lucian, trying to get the early advantages. And he succeeds. So some positives here for Shopify, who have had a very rough start to summer split. And they have been pretty unhappy about their slow start. But Insanity burning the flash from Corky. Now I'm saying, Maokai better yep. come over yep. mid lane. You better instantly yep. come over. Um, Tomio with Flash, the Maokai is basically guaranteed to get onto Corky. Jojo has to be very conservative with his uh, W now to remain very safe and have to give a lot more respect to Insanity. Blabber, meanwhile, over the ward. Shopify will see that Blabber is here for the dive thanks to that ward in the tri bush. And because Tomio has already passed to the bottom side of the map, he's still not level four yet. Blabber and Vulcan might bully him off of this Krug, denying him that level up. But the fact that Tomio is here ensures that Cloud9 cannot continue the dive. It does suck for Tomio, thankfully for him. Because he is playing that Maokai, he is playing that utility role this game, and he just needs to be there to make sure that his lanes don't fall disastrously behind. Yeah, it's kind of brutal right now because you deny the level four as well um, with stealing away enough of the Krug camp here. So it makes it a very, very dangerous when enemies have bot prio. Nautilus gets to roam along with the, Z the Zyra having the level advantage. So he's just making a rush for that crab. Doesn't want to get double crabbed. Has his smite and should be able to get oh it. Oh my god, but everyone. It might cost him everything. Everyone's closing in. Fanatos has the left flank on the pincer. The flash from Tomio trying to escape. But Vulcan has the CC to lock him down. Everyone goes for the jungler. Uh -huh. And first blood goes to Cloud9. Yeah, you can see it coming. As a jungler, you know, you're like, ah, I don't want to get double crabbed. You just kicked me off my Krugs. But you really got to respect the rest of the team roaming. This is Blabber's bread and butter gameplay. Blabber's crabbers are not gonna let you get away with that, Tomio. They punish and Cloud9 with the first blood. Zazel oh. might look for the flash, grand entrance, not quite. Jojo, yeah. Valkyrie's away. That does, that's so disappointing though for Tomio because you get this flash timer on Jojo Pion in the mid lane and you imagine that, hey, I wanna save flash twist in advance to set up the kill for mid lane. He was forced to use the flash trying to escape while getting the crab. I feel like if you know that you're greening for that crab, I don't know, maybe you, you save the flash and try to look for a guaranteed play because now you're looking for either Jojo Pion to overextend in mid lane to make that gank happen. I mean, there's a lot of times when you're really frustrated as a jungler when you, you're getting kind of pushed out, but you really have to respect the roam timers and also calling that top side is gone. Thanatos was able to move over through river plenty of time walking all the way down the river. And so huge punish because yeah, the, the lone bright spot, the early mid lane summoner spell advantage now becomes much more difficult to, to actually convert into gold right. value. So we will see, though, Cloud9, if they're able to keep this up. 
if they are able to uh, transition this into some dragons. Uh, I assume that they're going to try and use Bot Prowl here to be able to go start this one up. But it looks like they've got Blabber going to top side of the map since it's gr grubby time. Yep. Grab your grubbies first. They're way easier. Zyra can just annihilate those things. Only takes a few seconds, and then you can head back down to the other half of the map. Insanity just trying to tank up this wave. Zazel forced to roam mid lane since Vulcan is already here first, guaranteeing that Jojo Pyun can get the first wave push in. That guarantees and set up Pryo for the Grubbies, and now Blabber should get the full rotation. Yeah, it's a problem here for Shopify trying to answer uh, that it's a Mountain Drake. Those are pretty tanky and take a lot longer to kill than all the other dragons. It's by far the tankiest, and so they actually don't try and answer the Grubs with the objective uh, answer immediately, and they go for deeper vision first. Jojo barely does escape from the knock up here, but it's been a very delayed start on the dragon. So I want to see if Cloud9 are going to try and counter. I mean, they have push from Bvoid this time on the yeah. bottom side of the map, but Blabber is running on over. Zazel will block Blabber the entrance six. through the line brush, but yeah, they got to be careful. This is a very fed Zyra. If he wants to pop the Stranglethorns with the plants, it's going to be a lot of damage. Zazel forced the flash. Insanity not needing to pop the summoner spell. Bvoid is there first, so he can push Vulcan out of the river, but they lose the dragon tempo. Yeah, pretty big bot difference in the roam because Bvoid actually being there was a lot more pressure, and so. They do kind of chase him out of the river, and Blabber goes back to the top side to steal the blue buff instead. A lot of uh, health bars exchanged here, but still Shopify come out worse for the wear. And Blabber's able to... Oh, he smited it nice over the wall. Nice job. <laughs> Barely gets vision. <laughs> puts the ward down. Really, really needed that one because Tomio would be crying. It's almost a full level advantage here for Blabber. If Blabber had been able to finish off that blue, uh, and Toby did not secure that one, uh, then it would be the full uh, extra level there. That would have been extreme psychic damage if he doesn't get that blue buff. But. Tom Tomio, though, still very close to level six, so maybe he's going to be able to use uh, ultimate here to try and forge a comeback for Shopify. Problem is, it's quickly getting out of reach. Yeah, the gold lead just off of one kill is nearing that 2,000 mark, and normally with a team of Cloud9's caliber, against a team like Shopify who are still struggling to kind of translate what they're finding in scrims onto the stage, it's even tougher to try and come back from the state. All in potentially from Jojo Pyun as he just goes in for the Valkyrie, pulling opened up by Insanity, looking for extra pick of damage here. Jojo's just chunked to about 50% HP, but he's got pots. All right, next critical thing to look for is the push on the next minion wave here for bottom lane because everybody is coming down for possible dragon setup. Blabber here on the Zyra has his ultimate back and available. Cooldown has turned around from that early play, and so they are ready and willing to use it. Bot Prio achieved, so they can move on over to the dragon. And Thanatos is just getting solo plates by himself, Fake God. Struggling under the tower to hold this Renekton off. As Thanatos is now going to take the timer to back away. No teleports for either of these top laners, so no possible fight for the Dragon from them. Yeah, nice job here by Cloud9 clearing out all the vision through the setup here, too. It's so hard for Shopify to face check, so all they do, clear out the vision, go for their resets once again. And Thanatos gets another turret plate up here. This Renekton is the biggest gold lead on the whole map off the first kill onto Tomio using that first blood to really, really uh, good use up there and getting so many turret plates as well. I mean, Thanatos looking great so far. And Cloud9 are doing such a great job of playing around this mid lane as well. Even though Jojo lost that flash early on to Insanity, the prio gain from bot lane, the prio gain from top lane allowed them to always be the first one to collapse into the river. Zazel, is he in trouble? Oh, the Grand Entrance was interrupted and he doesn't have flash from before. The Ignite is ticking down. True Shot Barrage from downtown. Berserker gifts himself a kill. <laughs> the Sniper from downtown. Berserker's been off camera for the majority of this game <laughs> because it's been Vulcan roaming and uh, Berserker's just been farming and throwing his ultimate out to these little skirmishes. But the Ezreal's going to be a problem. You know, this, this thing, the reason it started to get so much more priority in pro play are all these extra buffs in the, the last few patches, the ultimate doing more damage is really relevant. And so uh, Dragon easily picked up here by Cloud9. It does seem like this one is going to be pretty smooth sailing for them. 
already over 2.5k, the gold lead. JoJo teleports right back out. And he Valkyries forward just to force Insanity off the wave. They get first push on it, and they're already fading into the second rotation of Grubs. I mean, Shopify Rebellion, I don't think they're going to get a single neutral objective this game at this pace. They kind of have to now start to pray that B-Boy is going to be able to get some extra money. Okay, Fake God bringing Thanatos under the tower. And it gets the flash out of the Renekton, but he's got a teleport, so he can get a recall and just look to join the top lane side again. Yeah, and it, it is going to still cost them the full six grubs. Cloud9 still have full supremacy over all of the neutral objectives of this game, including the extra gold lead. So uh, let's see about the comeback plays from Shopify. They got to figure out a way to get some money on Zeri, because... If they're going to be praying to the uh, B-Voy God here uh, for their big comeback play, he's going to need some items to do it. And right now, he might need a little bit of help to, to actually get those. Tomio is hovering right below Insanity, and Jojo Pyun has the ulti available. Jojo still with the flash, pushing out this wave. Zazel now arrived. Jojo has flash, yeah. so not going to be able to get anything here. He's just hovering up to his top side. You always want to play to your wards that you see right up there. So pretty easy stuff for JoJo positioning top half of the map. Uh, that's where Blabber is. That's where his wards are. No way that Shopify are going to be able to get him on that pass. But they got to keep trying. Got to keep looking for these little surprise plays. It's definitely looking very tough for Shopify right now. You can see that they... There are moments when they want to make proactive plays, but either they don't have enough information on where everyone else is on the map, so they're too scared to go forward and actually just take a risk on that. But at some point, I mean, when does Shopify need to start gambling? They need to lower the risk tolerance and just say, hey, if we don't do anything proactive now, Cloud9 are just going to run away with the game. Yeah, probably probably wait for one item power spikes um, and at, at least get a single item there for Zeri. Um, go for something, maybe, uh, you know, get your Leandries on the Maokai too. Hope that, hope that that's going to be enough. Um, usually when you're so far behind in an early game like this, yeah. if you aim for your first item, as long as you are not down a full item and the enemies don't have a full two by the time you get your first one, then you can hope for, like, your first little window for comeback plays there uh, and play off your single item power spikes while your opponents are on one plus pieces. Yeah, well, Tomio has completed the Liangi's Torment, so he can now start setting up those saplings. And that's really strong objective control, at least making sure that Cloud9 are going to have a more difficult time of trying to get into these choke points, setting up for objective. As long as Tomio is the first one there, Insanity also with the Kraken Slayer. It's pretty much up to these two guys if they can find a 2v1 pick, maybe a 2v2 on some of the squishier members of Cloud9. Maybe there's a chance, but still. The Wallet Diff already has climbed to 3,000 under 14 minutes. Yeah, putting up some uh, nice defensive wards around the map can can help sometimes because Zyra is definitely a champ that you can pop very quickly, but Viber is so far ahead, it's mm. really difficult, uh, especially with the extra harassment coming in. Uh, at least Tomio does secure that one, I believe. Yep. Securing the Gromp for himself, but it, it does seem like it's going to be really hard to fight the Rift Herald. For what it's worth, Tomio's not even that far behind in gold. It's It looks a lot just from the, the CS numbers. He's only down 800 gold. Zazel's gonna pull the trigger, looking for Blabber. He forces the flash. Vulcan trying to buy as much time as he can. True Shot Barrage from downtown forces Tomio to flash away. And Sandy trying to get back into the fight alongside B-Boy. The dredge line connects. B-Boy popping the barrier, frontlining. Berserker's now the first one in as well. And Shopify Rebellion don't drop a man, but they're the ones that lose the fight. Yeah, health bars are too low, so now fighting the Rift Herald is 0% chance for them. Cloud9 will secure another objective. Also securing the double push on mid here with the six Void Grubs. The mid turret is toast. First brick going over to Cloud9, accelerating that gold lead to almost just shy of 4,000 for them. And Thanatos has the pressure of his comrades in the river. They can look for a second tier one on the top side against Fate God. There it goes. Uh, this is this is becoming really dire for Shopify Rebellion. Yeah, I mean, Thanatos with the uh, Black Cleaver rush here too, trying to shred through this thorn mail of Fate God, not having any problems so far this game. The whole top tower <laughs> is just gone now. Um, honestly, it's pretty easy. He's got his teleport uh, up as well, so he can just head on down to the dragon, secure the objective for the team, and still have his teleport up for later. 
Trophy, you opened up the story at the beginning of this series of three of these members, four if you include the coach as well for Shopify, yep. of being former Cloud9 challenger uh, you know, players slash coach for themselves, including Revan. And um, it really does feel like this game is kind of that like older brother, younger brother situation <laughs> so far uh, with the, uh, the Shopify former challenger uh, members on their side having a rough start to this one and Cloud9 really making it look like this will be a clean one. You know, we've had Cloud9 victories in summer. Yeah. Uh, they, they are 2-0 for yep. their series, but uh, some of them have had uh, quite a few throws, some happy moments, you know, a little bit of fun <laughs> gameplay. Do you foresee some fun gameplay coming in here, or do you think this is going to be a clean finish? Because to me, this is a full, full clean finish, almost a sweep. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the goal for Cloud9 at this point, with how clean the first 16 minutes of the game has gone so far, I want to see how well Cloud9 can aim towards a perfect game. Not giving up a single turret, not giving up a single objective, not giving up a single death, because then Cloud9 can join the ranks of Team Liquid, who are well, that the top tower, I'm eyeballing the top tower objective bounty. He's TPing back it, to it. Thanatos is like, no, keep your hands off that tower. <laughs> They're looking for the perfect game still. <laughs> defend, defend, defend. I mean, it's, it's also important oh. about the extra money. And Sandy doesn't have flash from before. Thanatos has the flash advantage over on top of him. He flashes in place. Thanatos with the slice and dice takes out Insanity. <laughs> Yep, keep your hands off of that objective bounty gold. Thanatos with the teleport and flash invested to put Insanity back in the fountain. All right, next steps here will be the reset for Cloud9 because they just got a bunch of money, so you need to spend your money and then come back out uh, to continue to deny Shopify. We don't need to go over this replay uh, because it is pretty straightforward. As you mentioned, the only key part there that possibly would have given him an out would have been if he still had flash, but yep. uh, yeah, of course he did not, so dead and dusted. Cloud9 taking full stock of where everyone's summoner spells are. Yep, Croc. Definitely. <laughs> I, I'm with you Where's on that chat? one. Let me, I, I know exactly. <laughs> I can picture the chat now. <laughs> I mean, Thanatos has been completely steamrolling the top side of the map since level one, getting all five plates really by himself, a little bit thanks to the hover and the pressure from Blabber and Vulcan roaming to the top side of the map, but it has been a self-sufficient advantage that he's built up. And when a Renekton starts snowballing like this, the squishy marksmen that Shopify Rebellion have for themselves stand no chance. Yeah, I'm actually gonna open up the chat right now. Let's just take a look here. Uh... Put Everyone a, say put, hi, Kobe. Put a number, put a number in chat, um, and, which is going to be the percentage chance that you think Shopify have to come back in this game. Let's, let's take a look here. Yeah, we'll calculate that, and then <laughs> we'll get back because we're almost 20 minutes, Rafa, so that at least should be a fun moment. With Zyra, you can do 20-minute Barons even if you aren't this far ahead. Yeah. Uh, if your opponents do co not come check because of the power of the plants, Popping your ultimate on your plants, turbo juicing them, uh, allows for some extremely quick Baron takes and double uh, Trinity Force users here on the side of Cloud9. They should be able to burn it down very quickly. So I'm assuming here for Cloud9, you should get some nice resets. And honestly, if they wanted to speed run it, they would just set up their wards in the blue quadrant of Shopify's jungle leading yeah. up to the Baron and then rush down the Baron. Oh, but we're this. still a full minute ahead, so they're going to take the secondary tower first before going for the reset. So Shopify will deny the perfect game from Cloud9. Jojo was defending the tier one on the top side of the map, but he saw the rotation and the collapse from the rest of Shopify's squad, teleporting the mid lane so he could get out and not be forced to burn anything else, including his flash or his life. But they're going to get this push in the mid lane, and this will set up the priority necessary for that Baron. So I'm not going to say I'm surprised, but looking at chat, the most common answers are zero. Damn. And can you guess the other? 69. <laughs> so Get your luck. mind out of the gutter, chat. Good luck, Shopify. They've got a 69% chance to win this game. And they denied the perfect game as well. They yep. got the top tower. Yep, 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 yep. Shopify at least will have taken one turret for themselves. And at this point in the game, it's an objective bounty. So nice surplus of gold back into the pockets. Unfortunately for them, it's still a 6,000 gold advantage from Cloud9. And one of the things that we wanted to see from this squad from their spring split record is while yes, as Reaper mentioned on the interview, these are five strong, very individual players. 
but trying to put them together and making sure that they are on the same page has been the challenge. So far, you know, if, if you wanted to go up against one of the bottom teams in the league, this is the performance you need to be showing and, and aiming for. Yeah, it definitely is uh, disheartening for, for Shopify, but by the same token, like you're talking about, you then turn your eyes towards how cleanly can Cloud9 finish a game. Yep. Because there has been some scrutiny as far as, uh, you know, some of the generous plays that they have uh, made towards their uh, towards their opponents and uh, some of the... Oh! That hook barely misses, so Tomio does get to live for now. And we are approaching the Baron Bait moments here for Cloud9. They do have possibilities of turning, but C9 clear out that ward and then they've got the possibilities wait a second dragon is also up do they re do they care at all about playing it safer and going to get dragon first or do they want to just keep forcing here looks like they want to stick around I mean, cloud nine are maintaining control of the baron pit so in my mind it seems like they could care less if shopify managed to sneak the dragon i mean they, they don't think that they're gonna have to get soul to win this game i think for cloud nine they're yeah. like our timeline does not include a dragon soul uh, they're just going to keep the split push for Thanatos on bottom side and keep the pressure on Baron. I mean, for Cloud9, they, you could pretty much well end the game before Dragon Soul is even an option for either team. And now that Cloud9 have waited long enough and bullied Shopify from the that entrance, guarded. they're going to now turn towards the Baron. And look at the force, as you already mentioned. Turbo juicing the plants. The Thorn Spitters are all tearing it down. Blabber secures it, and now here comes the engage. Tomio is in trouble as he already flashed away. Thank God finds okay. one on the Vulcan, and now Cloud9. You just have to full veil. Preserve the Baron buff and as many members as possible, and Shopify Rebellion are trying to fish for any more kills, but they only get the one. One is better than none, though, so they're happy to get a tiny bit of gold, even though Cloud9 do get the Baron and will get the Dragon as well, and soon they will be marching towards your base. Uh, at least Shopify were able to get uh, the one kill onto Vulcan, get a tiny bit of cash for themselves. But yeah, uh, they're probably already thinking about what changes can we make for the next game. This is a best of three. This is a full series here. Uh, you know, really trying to focus on what we can do to make this one competitive. Muramana transformations as well had come in here for Jojo and Berserker, so Cloud9 will come with the Baron. Start knocking on the Shopify doorstep here as we get Thanatos up to the top side, shoving top side, and the rest of the squad here will be able to push mid and then rotate on up to him. Yeah. 7,000 gold difference at 23 minutes into the game. It is substantial. Yeah. That's that's a big number. I'll give them that. Cloud9, I mean, they have the tools necessary still with Baron buff on multiple members to push in through multiple lanes. Thanatos, because he doesn't have teleport anymore, will be joining the ranks of the team on this top push. And it's just Jojo and Thanatos curating the waves into both of these side lanes here. And Blabber and Berserker and Vulcan have the option of shifting to either lane as now they begin the siege. Yeah, it's really hard for Shopify because not only are they so far behind, but they're also outranged due to the poke that we talked oh. about in uh, Champ Select. Looking for a pick. I mean, Tomio pulls the trigger. It gets flash out of Jojo Peel, but now he's too far away to be jumped on. Mm. That is one timer that Shopify can maybe play for in an upcoming fight. All right. Inhibitor is going to go down probably for sure here as uh, Jojo comes to support the rest of the team, and then they go for a hook. Oh, nice anchor on to Zazel, and he was the other only initiation from Shopify that is now taken out of the fight. There's no nature's grass for Tomio, so it's just up to Shopify to step up and try to defend the towers with their faces, but their faces are not strong enough to withstand Cloud Nine's might. The first Nexus tower will fall. Tomio is returned to the fountain, and the rest of Cloud Nine's backline will continue the pain. Game one in dominant fashion taken by Cloud Nine. Woo! Wowee! Uh, you can't take away any points from Cloud Nine for that one. That was complete and utter domination by Cloud Nine. Uh, they have, uh, I saw most of the signs in the audience were for Cloud9 as well. Uh, yeah. Not surprising, they're also super popular, but those uh, those fans are definitely going to be happy with that one. Sometimes you want to see a little bit more of a struggle, though. 
So then <laughs> we'll see if game number two will uh, have more of a struggle. It definitely does make the game more exciting for, you know, either side if it's more competitive. But as a Cloud9 fan, you definitely want to see the most clean games against the bottom teams in yeah. the standings so that they're ready when they face top.